Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to our Marine Money Cyprus 2020 virtual forum. Mia and I are sorry that we're not in the Four Seasons Hotel in Limassol, but in the world we're living in, virtual events are what we can do. We would firstly like to thank the Shipping Deputy Ministry, the Cyprus Shipping Chamber, and the Cyprus Union of Shipowners who are supporting us today. We would also kindly thank all of our sponsors, whom you'll see on the screen uh, during the day. And of course, uh, we will uh, a big thank you to all of our speakers um, who have taken time and effort to prepare. We all know well that the, Cyp the Cypriot shipping community has made huge strides in the past years to establish a hub of expertise. And we will hear today during the sessions about some of the challenges which 2020 has brought to owners, operators and financiers. I'd like to start our session today by introducing Shipping Deputy Minister to the President, Mr. Vasilios Dimitriadis, who will give some welcome remarks. Mr. Deputy Minister, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to address the fourth annual Marine Money Cyprus Forum that brings virtually together esteemed members of the shipping, financial and business communities. The shipping sector, as many other sectors of the economy, is in a period of profound transformation. The sector faces an acid needs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, tackle air pollution, and continue to provide attractive employment. Striking the right balance between the green transformation and competitiveness is a challenge, but also holds opportunities. The European Green Deal has clearly identified water from transport as a key area of growth within the transport system. There is a clear need to intensify efforts to come up with a basket of measures, regulatory and non-regulatory. The measures should include development of clean fuels and available fuel infrastructure, use of energy efficiency technologies, support on research and development by building strong synergies between research institutes and the shipping industry, adoption of global market-based measures, optimization of ports and logistics operations through the use of digital technologies, promote initiatives to enhance Europe's leadership in green shipping technologies. All these initiatives will have the potential to improve the environmental sustainability of the sector, while enhancing maritime Europe's competitive, competitive advantage in new green technologies, creating opportunities for jobs and growth, and providing first mover advantage to the EU shipping industry. It is important to emphasize that maritime transport is in, intrinsically global. World trade relies on ships, the cargo they carry, the service industries that support them, as well as on the regulatory framework in place for the global merchant fleet. We should always have in mind that when it comes to climate change mitigation, there are no borders. EU legislative proposals should therefore be ambitious in order to drive change at global level, but at the same time, they should be realistic and applicable in a way that they would not put EU shipping in a disadvantaged position vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world. There is a need to provide industry with a framework that will further support growth, sustainable growth. Cyprus stresses the importance of adequate EU funding as a prerequisite for most of these green initiatives to materialize. The EU has to create the framework towards facilitating financing for viable and environmentally sustainable solutions. It should support the testing of new technologies and accelerate their use and to strive for green solutions promoting innovation for retrofitting and new buildings. Healthy oceans, seas, coastal and inland waters is one of the mission areas under the new EU's research and innovation framework program Horizon, 20, uh, Horizon Europe. The mission will help to make the blue economy more sustainable and climate friendly by promoting renewable and carbon neutral technologies, reducing emissions from existing sectors, and developing innovative solutions to reduce the environmental footprint of human activities. It will support research and development for zero emission technologies in water from transport. The mission will also propose new governance models 
and build partnerships with governments, business, universities, civil society, and with many others to work towards this common goal. The Shipping Deputy Ministry strongly supports synergies with the shipping industry, universities, and research institutions to seek solutions for the green transformation of the sector. As part of the Green Deal communication, the European Commission is currently examining the extension of EU emissions trading scheme to maritime transport. Cyprus expresses concerns on the introduction of any regional measure for the sector, including the ETS. The Shipping Deputy Ministry, together with the local shipping community, will act proactively in an attempt to prevent harmful provisions at the early stages of the formulation of EU legislative proposal. Our message to the European Commission is clear. Maritime transport should have a meaningful contribution to climate change whilst maintaining its competitiveness. Cyprus is strongly committed to an international approach led by the International Maritime Organization as the best way to achieve a global approach on decarbonization of shipping and will work towards ensuring that efforts at EU and global level are coordinated. Another important development that deserves shipping communities full attention is the EU regulation on taxonomy, which aims to create the world's first green classification of sustainable economic activities. It is expected to leverage on private investments to set in motion the transformation of the EU economic activities my time transport is, of course, one of them. By reorienting private sector investments to green technologies and businesses, the, this piece of legislation will serve as guidance for the EU to reach the climate neutrality by 2050. Taxonomy will provide clarity and transparency on environmental sustainability to investors, financial institutions, companies, and issues thereby enabling, enabling inform, informed decision making in order to foster investments in environmentally sustainable activities. An activity will get finance from the EU or from private funds only if it's considered green on the basis of the following six environmental objectives as defined in the regulation. One, climate change mitigation. Two, climate change adaptation. Three, sustainable use and protection of water and marine resources. Four, transition to circular economy, waste prevention and recycling. Five, pollution prevention and control. Six, protection of healthy ecosystems. The EU taxonomy is of great significance to the shipping sector. The environmental objectives mentioned above will form the basis in setting the criteria of green sustainable financing for the sector. In this extremely important exercise, the specificities of maritime transport and its international character should be taken into account. Embracing fully the new digital technologies is an important tool in coping with the green challenges. Today, more than ever, digitalization is an integral part of our daily lives. It has and will continue to transform our societies and businesses. The maritime sector is no exception to this trend. Since the beginning of 2020, the world has been dealing with the global pandemic that led to disruptions and a worldwide lockdown. The COVID-19 crisis has severely impacted the shipping industry and its operations, but unexpectedly resulted to the rapid advancement of technology. The pandemic is still ongoing. And in the shipping se sector, we daily witness many changes to maritime operations, from ship delays to port closures, as well as an increase in safety regulations, while crew changeover issues are in the spotlight. Cyprus once was one of the first countries worldwide that recognized seafarers as essential workers and introduced practical measures for crew changes. Since May 2020, around 5,000 seafarers have been repatriated or have been able to return to work through Cyprus and a great number of vessels of all types have visited Cyprus ports from all over the world, some of them remaining at Cyprus anchorages for a long period of time. Due to physical distancing, digital tools and solutions are more important than ever. In this respect, 
the shipping deputy ministry of cyprus is working towards the development of a digital post aid control platform and is exploring the possibility of remote audits another solution that came to the surface and has been widely applauded by the shipping industry is the digital certificates they provide significant efficiency gains for the maritime sector given the current situation and the barriers in physical interaction by reducing the administrative burdens for stakeholders and also reducing the document handling costs cyprus has made significant progress to simplify, simplify formalities and to transform our services to a paperless environment that will increase efficiency and attractiveness of the cyprus registry and its relevant services the shipping deputy ministry is in the process of formulating a roadmap of actions that will turn all our services digital, creating the framework conditions for one stop shop. The future is digital, and over the last two months, we have fast forwarded five to perhaps even 10 years in the evolution of how we work. Advanced resource optimization systems, automated cargo handling, equipment, and efficient information sharing between all actors will help cut costs. There is no doubt that COVID-19 pandemic is a catalyst for change. Adjusting to the new normal is not a cliche. In the pre-COVID-19 world, industry used to call regulators to have in place the necessary procedural framework in order to delay, not to delay innovation and digital transformation. Now the situation has changed. Delaying digital transformation cannot be an option anymore. Regulators should not only facilitate change, but they should work hand in hand with the industry to design together this new management model. We are acutely aware of the massive economic impact of COVID-19, including its possible medium and long-term effects on the shipping sector. We are evaluating all the available options and through the European Recovery and Resilience Facility, we are examining ways to assist the sector to recover from the drastic downturn in passenger numbers and in freight movements. The ERRF is strongly linked to the transition towards green and digital Europe. And on that basis, we are exploring ways to support the industry in the deployment and use of sustainable vessels, alternative fuels, and the digital transformation of the shipping sector. I'm sure that the holistic approach and turning challenges into opportunities is the right way forward. We need to combine the investment in new technologies the ongoing digital transformation with our strong focus on making maritime transport more sustainable and smarter, which facilitates further the deep integration of maritime transport into the multimodal logistics chain and help to boost competitiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, we must all commit to better business practices in order to create a more sustainable and inclusive world for all. It's time for more sustainable supply chains, a greater focus on green finance and a stronger commitment to social innovation. By allowing investors, lenders, insurers, and other stakeholders to have knowledge and transparency around the climate-related implications of specific initiatives, the flow of money will be directed to projects that will be of real added value to the shipping industry in its effort to cope with the green and digital challenges. On the regulatory perspective, Cyprus has to utilize its riches of expertise on shipping by building a strong network and alliances both at global and regional forums. Through active participation in the deliberations of IMO and EU, submission and promotion of Cyprus position at the very early stages of the formulation of new regulatory and non-regulatory initiatives, we could create the conditions to influence the decision-making process and to contribute effectively in making a positive difference for the global maritime sector. In search of bright days for shipping, it is clear that we have to rethink the way the sector operates. In this journey, there is a need for an ambitious vision and for clear objectives. It is for this reason that the Shipping Deputy Ministry is working towards the formulation of a long-term strategy for Cyprus shipping. We will soon bring the Cyprus shipping community fully on board. We are building a vision for Cyprus uh, shipping and we must do it together. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dimitriadis.
I think there is no doubt that the shipping industry, all all stakeholders in the shipping industry, have a lot of work to do in in the next few years in order to make shipping the way we want it to be and the way that it indeed has to be going forward. And we are very delighted to see that the Cyprus Shipping Ministry is taking a hands-on approach, and we're looking forward to being in Limassol and in Nicosia with you next year to discuss in more detail.